Hello, my name is Shannon Kringen, and you're watching Goddess Kring, uh, which is a nickname I gave myself uh, because I had a public access TV show on every week for 15 years called Goddess Kring, where I danced around nude, body painted myself, did improvisational monologues, poetry, spoken word, etc. I wanted to do a video. It's now January of 2016 and I just got triggered in a way. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, I'm 47 years old and I'm an only child and my childhood, my parents divorced when I was four and we moved around a lot. Both my parents are very intelligent, kind, sensitive people. In my opinion, they're also wounded and they, they kind of didn't give me the kind of attention that I wanted. I know that no parent is perfect, but I'm just going to preface this by saying that this video is about me and it's not about me wanting to um, judge my mother or my father or anyone else that I mentioned in this video. This is just about my own personal uh, growth and my own personal psychological awareness. I will say that I'm very proud of myself that I'm I'm handling the situation um, nothing horrible happened to me, but I got triggered. I work uh, full time as a figure model, which means I, I model nude for art classes. I'm the one that stands there very still and nude, and they draw and paint and sculpt. And sometimes I model for photographers, and I've done that for 23 years, which in itself is an amazing thing because I'm kind of an introvert and kind of shy, and yet I'm not shy. I like being on stage and I like being a model and I don't mind being nude in front of people but what happened was I was offered one a modeling gig and I won't go into details but I basically had to choose I was already booked somewhere else for part of the week and this other place wanted to hire me for the whole week but then I would have had to cancel and financially speaking I probably would have only made an extra thirty dollars if I had said yes to the plan B but I'm sticking with the plan A and it triggered me and it made me question and doubt myself and it made me like I, I started getting obsessive and I have this a tendency to be OCD I was triggered in terms of I thought it was about the modeling gig me doubting myself oh I should have done this I should have made cho choice A instead of choice B but I went with the choice that I went for and they already found another model for the other one so basically I have to stick with what I did but I feel really insecure and my stomach was hurting and my heart was racing I'm okay right now but earlier tonight I was obsessing and it was very uncomfortable and then I was starting to judge myself and tell myself a bunch of negative things and so part of my, my psychological issues are that I'm a bit OCD obsessive compulsive like I don't turn the light switch off and on you know 50,000 times or anything like that or wash my hands obsessively but I obsess in my head and I have lots of self-doubt and I have a hard time making decisions whether they're big or small at times when I'm when I'm feeling OCD it's really hard to make decisions whether they're small or big or small or medium um, which makes relationships with other people challenging which brings me to my next point is that I got triggered because of the modeling gig choice that I made but really it wasn't about that because I'm gonna be fine with the choice that I made nothing horrible has happened everyone is fine nobody's upset with me because I'm sticking with the gigs I already booked and I'm not taking the new gig I was offered and I told them why I said I'm already booked half that half that time there so everyone I model for is not, is happy with me as far as I know it's me that's not happy with me and my boyfriend for the for the for one of the for the first time in over 20 years I actually have a boyfriend that I get along with um, very well okay wait 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 I need to do a video need to do a video doing video will call right after okay so my boyfriend actually just texted me here's my beautiful uh, mobile phone that I decorated I made a sticker of my own artwork so there's my art so my boyfriend just texted me after the first time in many years I have a boyfriend who is seems compatible with me and he is he's compassionate and understanding he's a very strong person that's not scared of me or freaked out by me and I think I've become more mature I'm 47 now and I've become more mature 
so that I think I can handle having a, 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 a more functional type relationship. Uh, I have been told by certain psychologists, or like one psychologist in particular, that I meet the criteria for borderline personality disorder, but I'm extremely high functioning. And I don't really think I'm the cla classic borderline people like cut themselves and are very self-destructive and can't hold down a job. See, I've always had a job since I was 17. I've been employed. I love work. I'm really good at work. What I'm not good at is personal relationships. I don't have a lot of friends. I'm highly sensitive. And I was neglected a bit as a child. And so I got triggered with this modeling thing. And it made me, it reminded me of... Oh God, this is hard to explain. Okay, the, my boyfriend and I, I had a therapy session recently and my therapist said something about, oh, are your boyfriend and you thinking about living together? Which is a perfectly innocent question, but it scared me, it triggered me, it made me think, oh my gosh, because part of me is afraid that, you know, my boyfriend and I each have our own living uh, space and we like it that way. We both like a freedom, we both like our own space He's a freelance person and I'm a freelance person and I don't want to give any details that's it's it you know he's very private so I'm not going to say a lot about my boyfriend let's just say he's a really great guy and I really we're really compatible which is a miracle to me because I thought maybe nobody was compatible with me but I'm really happy that we're really good friends and we have really good physical romantic chemistry it's been over a year I've known him for I almost think almost 2 years dated him for a little bit over a year so we started off as friends and then we started dating and um, long story there but it's working really well but I got triggered about the idea of living with my boyfriend because part of me is afraid that if I'm if if he and I moved in together it might screw things up and I think we get along so well partly because we each have our own space and we can do our own thing and then hang out together and enjoy each other and then do our own thing again and maintain our own autonomy but I haven't told my boyfriend that my therapist even said that. And so I, I meant like, so I feel like inside me it was bubbling and I was worried about it. And then I also realized that going back and forth between my apartment and my boyfriend's apartment is reminding me of my childhood, of going back and forth between my mother and my father and my grandmother, mother, father, grandmother, back and forth, back and forth. Shannon was always going back and forth, back and forth. All my family members loved me. And in some ways my childhood was pretty good. Um, but there was a certain kind of like moving back and forth and a certain kind of, I didn't really feel really important. And I felt like I did, I wasn't getting a certain kind of support, encouragement and, and, and attention that I wanted and a validation. I was kind of invalidated in some ways, which kind of triggered the borderline, the tendency to be borderline. So what I was going to say about borderline was that I just tend to avoid relationships with people because some borderline people create a lot of drama with with people and I don't like that maybe in my 20s I created drama but I tend to just push people away and avoid people which is why I'm so good at being a figure model because the figure model just sits there quietly and just stares off into space and so I get to be with people but I don't have to like engage in a uh, you know in a way that scares me so I feel safe when I'm the model I feel safe and living alone feels safe to me I think maybe part of me would like to live with a boyfriend someday I've tried that a couple times, didn't work out too well. So I feel like I need my space, and I don't know how much of that is that I'm a wounded person, and how much of my desire for space is just my own preference, because I am mostly an introvert. I'm an introvert who likes to go on stage. So I'm an introvert who likes to be a nude model. So I'm sort of introverted, but kind of extroverted in it. I'm going to do another video in the future about both introverted, extrovert, extroverted, introvert, what, what I think that means. But my borderline was triggered. I have this fear of abandonment and this sort of um, wanting to push people away and feeling insecure. And, and then like I abandon myself and then I tell myself negative things in my head. I don't cut myself or do, I don't, I don't like drinking or smoking or drugs or gambling or anything like that. So I'm a very high, if I'm borderline at all, it's very high functioning. But what I mean by borderline is that I have a lack of sense of self and I beat myself up and I, and I get really upset and I get, I, I'm very sensitive and I, I react to things very strongly and I need to go off by myself to calm down. And it's sometimes hard to calm down. So I was triggered. So I'm triggered about this thing. I want to talk to my boyfriend about it because we have really good communication. So I think if I just talk to him about this stuff, I'll feel better. 
and figure out how to deal with the fact that when I go to his house, I feel like I'm going back and forth. It just reminds me of my childhood of going back and forth between my parents in kind of a negative way, like as if I'm, you know, like a low self-esteem kind of way, like I'm not important enough to not have to go back and forth between my parents. So I don't know if that made sense, but I realize now that the modeling gig, my obsession about this modeling gig choice that I made is not really about that. It's about me feeling insecure and a lack of self-confidence. And the issue I have about my therapist asking me about my boyfriend and I talk about moving in together. You know, she was saying it like she was excited to hear about how healthy our relationship seems to be, which I think it is probably the healthiest relationship I've ever been in. So now I just need to work through these feelings I have. And I also watched an Eckhart Tolle, Eckhart Tolle video earlier today about being in the present moment. You know, he's the guy, Eckhart Tolle. He is the guy I actually saw him live in person like 20 years ago when his book was new or 20, early 90s, whatever year that was. But uh, his book called The Power of Now which is great. It's that it's just that I use that against myself. See the borderline in me, in me wants to, you know, pick scabs emotionally and pour salt on my wounds, which is what I did. I washed Eckhart Tolle and it made me feel better like, "Oh, I can drop all the baggage from the past and just be in the in the 2016, the the year of 2016. My childhood doesn't matter anymore." But the truth is, in the present, I'm obsessing and I'm triggered and I feel a, a certain wound coming to the surface and maybe that's an illusion and in the present moment I'm perfectly fine it's 2016 and I live alone in my own apartment and I pay all my bills I'm totally independent I'm totally fine and I have a very supportive boyfriend who really cares about me and encourages me in my career and my personal growth um, and I encourage him as well and you know with his projects he does creative projects in his own way and we encourage each other so that's really good but I'm upset and I know I seem okay. See, I think on the surface, I feel t like I'm stable, I'm strong, I eat healthy, I exercise, I, I work full time as a model, um, I'm financially doing okay, like I'm low income, but hey, because of that I get Obamacare and because of my low income, uh, I have a good, um, I have health care and my student loans. I don't have to pay anything because I can't afford to right now and I can prove that with my income tax uh, return or whatever. So whatever. So I'm okay. The irony or the, the funny thing is about the United States is if I made more money than I do now, then my health care would be expensive and my student loan payment would be expensive. So I'm actually better off staying kind of low income. I'm just low income enough so that I can afford to pay all my bills and to eat healthy food and take good care of myself and work full time as a freelance person. But I'm just, I'm triggered. I'm just feeling like, you know, I have a little OCD thing going on. I have a little borderline thing. And you know, it's really mean. Some people have said to me, oh, you're not borderline. You don't know what that means. No, that's not true. Actually, I am mildly borderline according to the uh, medical center that I went to that said I meet the minimum requirements for part of it, although that was 15 years ago and I think I've outgrown some of it. They say the older you get, the more, if you're really working on personal growth and you're a smart person like me, some of the, some of the baggage will just drop away. Some of the neurotic bullshit that's in my head has dropped away and I have more common sense now and it's easier for me to not beat myself up, but I have beat the shit out of myself. I've thought about suicide many times, but I've never attempted it, mostly because I'm a spiritually aware person to the point where I'm afraid maybe if I tried to kill myself that my consciousness would continue and, and it would get worse because if you kill yourself, that's a pretty horrible, like I don't really want to harm myself that much. It's just I want to escape sometimes and I want to run away from my life um, and I don't want to hurt the people that love me. So when I think about that, that's why I've never attempted suicide. I've never been in the hospital. Uh, I've never like checked into a hospital. I've called the crisis line many times to talk with somebody about my emotional freak outness, but I'm always rational enough to talk myself out of it. So I'm a very, very strong person. I'm very smart. I'm, I listen to Eckhart Tolle and Deepak Chopra and Wayne Dyer and, um, Oprah Winfrey, I don't know, a lot of like the wise spiritual people and, and Gangaji and um, 
I've done Vipassana meditation, silent meditation retreats, and I've done lots of things. I've worked on my nutrition and my exercise, and I take uh, spirulina and vitamins and kombucha, and I do lots of things to try to heal. Uh, the truth is, is that I'm a very highly sensitive person, and so I have to be careful to stay grounded and to stay equanimous and balanced. And so I'm triggered by this whole... I'm triggered, but I guess I'm okay because I'm talking on the video about it in a very functional way. So I guess I'm okay. I'm just dealing with some borderline tendencies of feeling a lack of sense of self. I like to say, self-abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted. That's part of a poem. And then, um, intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me. And so there's a lack of sense of self, a fragile sense of self, intangible desire for wealth is another line of one of my poems. Because I feel sometimes like I'm an empty shell and I'm like a chameleon and I don't have a real self. But then the spiritual people say, well, we don't really have a real self anyway. We just invent one because who we really are is constantly changing. So maybe it's healthy in a way to not have a sense of self. But then they say you need an ego to survive in this world. Everyone needs sort of an ego of like self-confidence and we know who we are. And there's times when I feel like I don't know who I am and that I am actually nobody and that I'm only somebody when I'm with somebody else. Like I need to be validated by somebody else and it's hard for me to validate myself. And so I have this insecure sense of self and I get scared around and I have a hard time trusting other people maybe because I don't trust myself enough. But see, there's part of me that's like what I just said, and then there's part of me that's actually really confident. I've traveled all over the world. I have friends in different countries. I've been a model. I had my own TV show for 15 years. You know, it's like I'm shy and yet I'm not. And it's like I'm a little bit borderline and yet no, I'm pretty functional. And yet I'm a little OCD and yet no, I'm okay. I Because I'm aware, I've done a lot of meditation and I can witness, I, there's a witness, there's the part of my brain that's, you know, monkey brain, monkey brain, there's this part of me that's very neurotic and obsessive and self-destructive and negative and judgmental, but then there's this wise mind, there's this wise mind inside me that, that can just, that can look and go, oh, look, look, Shannon is like being self-destructive, Shannon is judging herself and others, Shannon is caught up in fear, Shannon feels insecure, like, I want to be the Wizard of Oz, Goddess Kring, and yet who I am is like Shannon behind the little woman behind the curtain. I'm just Shannon behind the curtain. I want to be Goddess Kring, the Wizard of Oz, or I'm just a little man or woman behind the curtain. So there. So now I feel better that I shared this video. So my name is Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring is my nickname to try to help me rise to the to my higher self, the Goddess within me, the Namaste, the God and goddess within you is acknowledged by the, the goddess and God inside me. So there it is. So um, so that's that's my that's what I wanted to share. So it's January 2016. That's what I'm going through. I also want to do a video about nutrition and mental health, exercise and mental health, and being an introverted extrovert. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, Google me, Goddess Kring, or go to my website, shannonkringen.com, S-H-A-N-N-O-N-K-R-I-N-G-E-N. -N -N -E Thank you for watching. I guess I feel better now. I'm okay. I left a voicemail for my therapist. I just did this video monologue. Now I'm going to talk to my boyfriend about my feelings. I guess everything is going to be okay. I just feel kind of my stomach hurts. I feel insecure. But when I think about what's happening in the present, I'm okay. I'm having lots of feelings and thoughts in my head. But the physical reality is I'm in my apartment. I'm totally safe. I have a bunch of modeling gigs. I have a boyfriend. I have a therapist. I'm paying all my bills. Everything is fine. I'm just having a lot of fear inside my own head. That's my big issue is just thoughts in my head that, that bother me. And I need to learn how to soothe myself, validate myself, love myself, give and receive love and support with others, and just acknowledge my feelings. I don't want to deny my feelings, but I don't want to dwell, and I do want to be in the present moment. You know, I'm not in my childhood anymore. I am 47 years old. I am an adult, even though I don't feel like an adult sometimes, but I'm sort of childlike, and there's pros and cons to that. I never had kids of my own, so 
decided not to do that. Okay, thank you for listening. I will do another video soon. Thank you. This I feel better now getting all that off my chest. I hope if you have any questions or comments or if anything I say makes you think of anything that you want to share about yourself or if you have any insights you want to share, I'm totally open to that. Uh, so thank you for listening. So yeah, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. And you know, and one more thing. I did a therapy session recently and there's times when I worry that I'm a narcissist because I take so many pictures of myself and I did a video, a show called God is Cream. The, the truth is when I'm in my therapist's office, it's hard for me to go on and on and on about myself. And my therapist asks me about myself and I talk about myself for like about two minutes and then I immediately start talking about my mother or my father. I obsess about my mother. Well, my mother, blah, 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 and my father, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, why can't I focus on myself? So I think that means I'm not really a narcissist because if I was a narcissist, wouldn't I just be rambling on about myself the whole time I was in therapy? And instead I obsess about my mother and my father as if I think they, I have to figure something out before Shannon can grow up and focus on Shannon. She has to like, figure something out about her parents. Like I have a tendency to worry about both my parents and whatever their problems are, I'm worried about. Even though they're in their late 60s and early 70s now, I'm still worried. I'm worrying about my parents' problems, just like I did when I was in third grade. And it's like, I need to let that go and focus on taking care of me, being the best Shannon that I, being the best Shannon Nicole Kringen that I can be and have the best life that I can have. Okay, thank you for listening. So there it is.